you have watched how people many times they're happy that we're playing these tapes that we go and videotape and record mm -hmm. and that's great we're happy to present this uh, information so people can uh, learn the facts that uh, often are not published on the main media and uh, we attend to rallies and uh, people protest and it's helpful because it somehow perhaps influences the policies people phone in people write emails to the politicians people uh, have interviews with politicians like sometimes we do on our program and yet it seems almost like uh, we're not going anywhere like uh, things don't change it seems like our work is almost irrelevant sometimes well i don't think you can call it irrelevant because it's it's actually uh taking uh points of view that like you say don't get mainstream media coverage and then uh putting up uh, new ideas for television viewers to contemplate when they make decisions about uh, how they uh, want to see government run. Uh, but uh, because they only get their democratic right for three minutes, once every four or five years in the, in the voting booth, uh, you're right, not much changes. Uh, like you say, not much changes because people can't really uh, uh, change government uh, and the ideas of the politicians uh, without some kind of tool to uh, effect change other than their, uh, their vote once every four or five years. But uh, it doesn't matter uh, who wins the election, the government always gets in, <laughs> and, and uh, then uh, they have free reign to choose what their agenda uh, will be for that period of time that they have office. Mm -hmm. And so we have very little recourse as to how things are run because of the electoral system that we have. Right. So, what do you think, Linda? Is, is, is it uh, about time that uh, we start looking beyond the mood of protesting and, and rallying and writing letters to politicians and interviewing politicians, which is all good, but do you think that the missing link here is something that we call the nowpolling.ca? Well, I think that nowpolling.ca could be a good tool, but I I think it can be in addition to what we are already doing. Because mm -hmm. I also, like Tom, don't feel that it's irrelevant what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Because we go out to um, small groups and we help them get their message out to a much larger audience. You know, some very important issues about health care, about peace, um, Translink. Um, so we're giving people information so they could um, use this information along with now polling mm -hmm. uh, .ca. So I think in addition to mm -hmm. what addi we're already doing. Okay, so in addition to, to protesting and rallying and talking to politicians and talking to each other, do you think that uh, we people should be aware that this now polling.ca this polling system is very important because that's the only way how we can how we can measure the the number of people that are in favor or against an issue otherwise we're just uh screaming in all directions but not counting it and in in our democracy we have to count that's what we do to elect politicians. We count the votes. And therefore, polling, counting of opinions, is very important. Um, I think, think that's what you have to... Uh, what the listeners need to know is how... 
an alternative polling system would work. And that you can go there any time to register your particular opinion on the important social issues at any time. And in addition to uh, voicing your opinion uh, by voting on specific issues around transit, around uh, bicycle paths, around health care, and so on and so forth, uh, uh, you could also, uh, if your elected uh, representative is somehow failing in what they initiated as a platform for what they would do to represent their constituency, if they were failing, you could go to that polling station on the day you decide and withdraw your vote if that candidate is not doing what they said they were going to be doing for the constituency. So it would be like uh, effective recall is the uh, term I, I, I think we want to use here. Yeah. So voters need to know how that model would work for them, uh, and it's quite simple. I think this is a good point to bring in the uniqueness of neopolling.ca, because in many polls you go and you put your vote, and that's what it will stay uh, for the rest of that poll. Whereas in neopolling.ca or ourpolls.ca, you can go and change your vote. And that gives you the ability to change your support for a politician as well. Not just for an issue, but for a politician. So that ability of having an account on, uh, on this registry where you can change your vote when you change your mind, I think is a very unique thing that uh, I haven't seen any other poll so far in my life like this now, polling.ca. For viewers who are interested, uh it, it, it's quite easy to go onto the World Wide Web and uh, uh, click on nowpolling.ca and uh, you can peruse the website without having an account to see how the registered voters are voting on issues and then you can create your own personal account uh, and you have to look at it as uh, a model for a, a truly uh, unique and uh, uh, different uh, type of electoral system. Uh, you create your account and then you're able to vote. Uh, the only thing you have to divulge uh, in this uh, experiment is your name and your email address and your uh, your uh, postal code so that the system can recognize your riding uh, when you're voting on uh, candidates for your riding. I think what we put together so far is a um, pilot project mm -hmm. for this email polling and we're hoping to make it more um, sort of legitimate because there are, people are questioning how do we know that um, the people who register there are who they say that they are. They're legitimate. Who are, they are legitimate, right? Mm. And so that's one of the things that we have to um, overcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to set up another a way of doing it and um, maybe you would like to explain that. Uh, yes, uh, because of this problem of uh, legitimacy of the, um, the registered voters, we are going to have to uh, require that new registrants uh, starting probably next month or January will have to uh, uh, present themselves in person to a public place like a public library and, and show some identification. Because unless we have some identification and somebody is responsible for registering this person as a voter, then uh, the, the, the registry, the list of voters, can be uh, uh, corrupted by fraudulent registries. Mm -hmm. So if we want it to be serious, if we want it to make a uh, uh, more legitimate uh, poll, uh, 
we have to request that people show some identification. Uh, that's what the government does if you're registered as a voter with uh, BC elections or municipal elections. They uh, require to know where you live and that you're in fact a real person. Or even to get a library card. That's right. For a library card you have to show some identification and show that you are a citizen of that particular area that you deserve that service. So we're going to have to do the same thing just to make it more um, safe, more secure, more legitimate. One of the concerns or the issues that I've heard about this um, now polling.ca and, and voting is people are so busy and, and they don't see why it's important for them to do it. So mm -hmm. why is it important? Yeah. Uh, my opinion on, on this, uh, the importance of voting, is that if we don't make decisions as citizens, then uh, we'll have to accept the decisions that other people make. So it's true that politicians usually get more informed than the average citizen, but it doesn't necessarily make them wiser than the average uh, person in the public. So if we want to have a self-governance, a more direct democracy, where we can uh, participate in the decision-making of uh, the m more important decisions that the government right now makes, if we want that decision to be ours, then we have to show that on a poll. If we don't show it on a poll, then politicians think that they speak for ourselves, when in fact they're speaking for themselves and very often for corporate interests. And uh, who pays? We pay for all those mistakes. So either we uh, wake up to reality and start participating in our decision making and our governance, or we're going to have to accept what others do. And all we can do is protest and say, uh, I disagree with that, and go with the signs in the street and uh, write them letters and heckle them in the street. But we cannot change because in the present system, we're giving them a blank check, basically, saying, uh, you make decisions for me for the next three years, four years, five years, depends on the level of government. And we are basically uh, uh, disabling ourselves from participating. So th what this poll is doing is then, let's tabulate our popular will and let's uh, empower ourselves with this tool to pressure politicians to do what we want to do, not what the politicians want to do, which in many, in many, many occasions it's in conflict. Linda, tell me why, why do you think people are uh, apathetic towards uh, voting? Do you think that the word uh, perpetual democracy was uh, uh, scaring people that perhaps uh, they had to vote all the time? I think people had the misconception with the word perpetual that they had to do it all the time because that's what I heard. I heard many people saying, I don't have time to vote all the time. Mm -hmm. What is this mm -hmm. perpetual stuff? Mm -hmm. and, and of course the, the answer to that is that uh, you don't have to vote all the time. The, the answer to those people who are afraid that they're gonna not have enough time to participate in this democratic procedure, the answer is that what we're proposing here is for voters to have the right and the ability to vote, not necessarily that they have to go every day to a library or to a computer and vote, but to claim that right to vote whenever you change your mind. Whenever you need to vote, you go and vote. That is the message that uh, we want people to understand. Well, nowpolling.ca is a model for uh, uh, effective recall, uh, making your individual opinion known uh, to the greater voting constituencies, uh, how you stand on certain issues uh, affecting the lives of everyone, whether it's your hydro bill or your bicycle lanes or 
uh, your health care or your education. Uh, all of these things are affecting us every day of our lives. Uh, so by having uh, the right to express your opinion on a poll anytime you want uh, makes for a more vital democracy. More direct democracy. And direct, exactly. Mm -hmm. A direct, uh, more direct democracy, yeah. Why should people be uh, more interested in political issues? Why should people go and vote for issues? I think the reason that people don't go and vote for issues or, or don't vote anyway is because they feel that their vote doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. They feel that they're not really counted. So I think with this now polling system, mm -hmm. their vote will make a difference. They can see that their vote will make a difference. And that may empower people to, to want to vote even more and then to go out and vote in the federal and municipal and provincial mm -hmm. elections. Right. And I think that what you mean by it make a difference is because it will be counted. Mm -hmm. And when it, when it is counted, it becomes a statistic with power. Because if 70% of people want something to be done and the politicians are not doing that, then it's a powerful statement saying, look, here's the people, 70% of people want it, and you're not doing it. Why? It becomes very powerful. So that's why registering the vote becomes very important. Another thing that I've heard from people about the nailpolling.ca is that there's so many questions on there. Uh -huh. Okay. So and how how would you handle that? Well, the questions uh, they're there doesn't mean that people have to answer all of them at once. Mm -hmm. uh, a voter can choose to uh, to participate on federal issues and maybe only on healthcare issues and maybe only on transit issues, whatever is of your interest. The number of questions that one uh, addresses is up to the individual, so you you don't have to vote on all issues. And another issue that I've heard is that people say that this is not kind of a legitimate poll because it's not random selection. Mm -hmm. A random selection applies to sample polls. When uh, you have a sample poll, then it has to be scientifically random and, uh, and uh, all the, the statistics that go with it. What we're trying to do here is not uh, a sample poll. We're trying to do a universal poll. In other words, we're hoping ideally to have everybody in the writing uh, registered. So it's not a sample. So it doesn't have to be random. Uh, as it grows, it becomes universal. When it's little, like right now, we have only hundreds of people register on it, then it, it's, uh, it can be skewed because only those who register right now are putting their opinions. But we're expecting that people will see the importance of this poll and will participate in it. So it's up to the people to make it scientifically legitimate. We, uh, we certainly invite the viewing audience to uh, certainly visit the, the website and peruse, you know, set 10 or 15 minutes aside to go to nowpolling.ca and uh, look at the issues posted. Uh, if it sparks your interest, then it's very simple to create an account uh, at this point and be part of the experiment and, uh, and vote on those, those issues and see how your, your vote uh, looks against all the other voters. Uh, you can uh, change the percentages of uh, uh, the results, the results uh, when you actually participate. So uh, it's important for people to participate at this uh, early stage of a viable uh, uh, electoral reform. And uh, just stay tuned to the progress of this interesting 
uh, development of democracy, direct democracy.